Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Thief 2014 Game Thoughts If you did not read so in the opening text, or if I forget to add it, I will be spoiling the first three games in this as well. I don't find that I can really get into detail about this in any meaningful way without doing so, so you have been warned. I read somewhere, and I of course forgot to write it down because I'm terrible at this whole sourcing thing, that apparently this is Garrett's descendant, which, I mean, it's not really said in the game outright, or maybe I missed it, but definitely when you look at things, there are a number of details, like, you know, you go to the last cathedral, which was, you know, which has been broken down, they talk about, you know, the old gods, which, yeah, I mean, those, uh, the, the builder, the, you know, I mean, the, no one talks about old gods as, you know, as past tense kind of thing in, in the trilogy. It's very much, no, 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 the builder, you know, the builder's word is true, and the trickster is, you know, is coming, and, you know, this, this whole thing, so it's, yeah, there is a, there is clearly this, you know, some, and, and the, the asylum is Widow Moira's asylum, as in, you know, the Widow Moira in the third game, the, you know, pirate widow. So, so, yeah, you know, there are little hints, but, yeah, and that makes sense, you know, it's a way to, you know, make, make, it, it explains why he and the environment, to an extent, are, you know, different, and you know, it's a way to appeal to the mainstream. I mean, to an extent, you could say that all of Garrett's story was really told in the trilogy. I mean, it's very self-contained. It's like when they tried to make sequels to Prince of Persia, the Sands of Time trilogy. It's like, where exactly does this fit in the... and doesn't this happening kind of render this other thing pointless because you know when when you look at the the sands of time trilogy you know game one he's a child he's a, he's immature and he's a little bit spoiled maybe in the second one he's you know uh, he's he is becoming a youth he is brash and he is certain that he knows right and then the third he becomes a grown-up he accepts responsibility it's very clear and that's you know that same thing is very true of you know in in the three games you know gradually Garrett comes closer to the keepers eventually accepting becoming a keeper and we have the book ending of you know you have skills not many can sneak up on a keeper especially one who does not wish to be you know yeah especially one who does not wish to be seen you know so yeah, you know, and yeah, it makes sense to yeah to to make it a, a different Garrett. And like I said in the review, it's difficult to get Garrett really involved in a plot. He's a thief. He's apolitical. He doesn't get involved unless he has to. So yeah, and that means this Garrett, unlike the trilogy Garrett, you know isn't quite content with working alone. You know, this Garrett goes, you can get a little emo sometimes, which evidently the old Garrett would rather die than have happen. You know, and, and evidently having a specific, you know, having some specific abilities arise from the, you know, one of your eyes is a family trait. I like that Orion's revolution is clearly not fixing the problems with the city. It's not even made to look like a necessary evil. It's a redirection of destructive energy. These people who have been so beaten down by the city watch and just, yeah, furious, and they want to destroy, and he turns that destructive energy, 
you know, I mean, yes, they, they get a lot of the watch, but they also destroy the bridge. You know, this is not, you know, even, even before we fully understand what Orion is doing, we see that the Graven are killing and burning, you know, killing some of their own people, burning down some of their own city. And, you know, it's, it's, it's very clear that it is this, it is a cult. It is not a, it's not a movement as a, it, it's not a civil rights movement, say. It's, you know, clearly they, they come from a, a, the right place. They, they want to fix this. They, they want to improve things, but it becomes violent and it, it, yeah, it becomes this cult. Like, you know, Garrett points out, you know, they're, they're killing anyone who doesn't believe in their vision. So yeah, it's, and of course you can, you know, get a cult like that in, in a whole year of this awful plague and nothing being done to help them. Of course, Orion managed to, yeah, encourage that much and direct all that hatred and, please no commenters make this into a racial thing it's not about ethnicity it's about class if you have been beaten down yeah you're you're willing to fight back and yeah and yeah it's, revolutions rarely lead to better governments they might change who's in government they might actually take out the the government temporarily leaving a power vacuum which might encourage war over the leadership and yeah it's clearly not it's not like they're just getting rid of you know the this you know the, the baron's harsh rule which is clearly harming people you know he does not care about the the gloom and yeah you know it's not just getting rid of that and then introducing democracy you know the the french revolution was you know the the the, the three ideals. It was supposed to get rid of this awful. And there's also, you know, in both, people were dying and nothing was being done. You know, in, you know, the the French Revolution, it was because there was no food that was, you know, yeah, they were starving to death. And in this, they are dying on the streets from the gloom and nothing is happening. They even had that thing of, oh, just take Dr. Troy's thing, and then you hear Dr. Troy's two guards. Yeah, probably no. No, it doesn't work. It's just yeah, and yeah, it that and and the French Revolution indeed. A lot of the people who you know who fought it ended up dying themselves. And before the French Revolution, the aristocracy had you know the the lower yeah the lower classes people from the lower classes you know, guillotined. Once the French Revolution happened, the, the, some of the lower class people guillotined a bunch of the aristocracy, including children. I'm not saying that they had no reason to hate these people, but they didn't make things better. And then, you know, after the revolution, they still had Napoleon. So yeah, it didn't fix things. It was just getting to, it, it was cathartic. It let out a lot of fury, and that was it. And then we're left with a lot of death and and or destruction, and what now? And yeah, you know, it was, you know, it was clear that Orion, he was, you know, he had basically gone mad. You know, he, he wouldn't accept that it was turning, you know, yeah, it was the the primal what was was what was turning these people into the the creatures, and the yeah you know he's yeah it's it's quite nicely done and and you also don't really I mean at first you know oh the voice of the people and you know some people are arguing with City Watch in public and that's you know and they mean ah you know maybe you if you're you know, are, you're, you're kind of making a fuss. Are you a grave? And so it's, it seems almost like an oppressed minority, which, to be fair, maybe they started out as. And, you know, Garrett meets Orion. It's like, 
this is Garrett, and you know, friendly handshake, and yes, you know, they just calm. He seems charming enough, you know, charismatic. You can you can maybe see how people can get behind this guy, you know. And you know, and and some of the words, some of his words that you hear people, you know, say like, you know, this this thing of you know, things will change. A new dawn is coming. That doesn't really, you know, off at first. That doesn't really sound that bad. It sounds like, you know, yeah, things will change. That's good. Things are bad. Things should change. But then you realize that they're actually you know, extremists and the, you know, not necessarily everyone. There there are some that refuse to, you know, you you hear you know, that, you know, I just I couldn't go be a part of that. And some of them say, but we're burning our own city and you know but yeah, the people who actually go ahead, yeah, they're they're extremists. They're they're violent. And this is not improving anything. You know, it's you know, and, and the, the part of the bridge that they, they destroy, you know, yep, they use it to build that, that ship, you know, so, yeah, and, and they can build, you know, been building that for a long time, you know, it was down, you know, they're, they're working in the hidden city, there's no, yeah, which I, I suppose also the hidden city might be because, you know, some of what is down there is, like, maybe some of the caverns that, you know, they built on from the caverns, from, you know, yeah, the, the, the caverns in the trilogy and, you know, such. And I also, it's just, it's a good image, you know, when you're taking the elevator, it's, it's actually like in Davis, like Human Revolution, when you're taking the elevator in, crap, what was it, Hong Kong, maybe? And it's just like, it's this huge, because, you know, in Deus Ex Human Revolution, they've just built up and up because there, there are so many people there. So they were building up because you can't keep building out. And yeah, and the, the elevator ride, and you see all this, you know, all this on top of each other on the, all these buildings, and it's really compelling in, in both. And yeah, a good image. The, the game has a lot of you know, really memorable sites like that and, and levels. Now, I suppose that more or less covers the revolution. We all want to change the world. The In the asylum is where you first see the creatures. I know that there's another name for them. I don't particularly... I'm not real big fan of that word, so I'm going to go with creatures. Yeah, the if you don't want to fight them, and if they notice you, you can go into the light, so suddenly you're safe in the light. Maybe this was supposed to be like a clever subversion, inversion of the rest of the game where you're safe in the dark, but it just doesn't work. It feels wrong to move Garrett into the light and for that to be safe. It's just, you know, I I, I don't so much mind that you have this creature that you can be standing in a place and they're, you know, be completely safe from, you still have to eventually move. You know, personally, I, you know, yeah, I, I was, it, it was a level where I decided I was going to play a predator. And so the moment they showed up, you know, they don't like light. I've got fire arrows and yep, headshot kills one immediately, so yeah, that's, yeah, and yeah, I, I stealthed my way through it, killing them one at a time, and a lot of the time they were even, you know, one by one, you know, I didn't keep killing, I think that was the only level where I actually killed them, but yeah, you know, it, it's, yeah, ultimately that, that part just really doesn't work. I the the lip service with like names and so you know there's still a basso the different parts of the city are called more or less the same thing and you know things like that it's just fine you know but the bigger references and and such those I quite like the fact that the client you keep working for turns out to be 
a very destructive force and the leader of a faction which is very dangerous. You know, in the first game that was true of Constantine and the pagans, and in this it's true of Orion and the Graven. You know, and at the time, you don't think much of, I mean, Constantine's kind of weird, and Orion, yeah, I mean, I guess he's okay, it's, you know, whatever, it's fine, you know, I'm, I'm Garrett, I'm apolitical. But then, you know, suddenly you realize just how dangerous it is and that you have to stop that leader, you know, and or their source of power. In this case, it's more the, you know, the primal stone than, you know, I mean, even if you hadn't shown up when you did, Eren would still have died and it's likely that she would still have killed Orion, but she would still have the primal in her. And if you didn't show up to you know, extracted. Yeah, that sucks. The And then you have the fact that industrialism, excessive industrialism, is really harming, you know, the, the regular people. You know, you have all this. Uh, I, th I think it's a really good image. It reminds me of Metropolis. When in the second level, you see all these bodies being carved. I mean, it's not like, you know... Maybe that would have happened. I mean, I, it's more that the, the gloom is seems more like it has to do with the primal than necessarily the machines. But this image of machines just mass producing just, you know, ashes of people, of, of bodies. You know, these people aren't going to get a burial. These people aren't going to, you know, I mean, the, the one thing is, you know, this guy swallowed a ring. I'm going to cut him open. This guy used to be one of the barons. I, I'm pretty sure even he was one of the barons. You know, they're, they're all dying because of the primal aging and, and growing sick and such. You know, and he's... Okay, let's say it wasn't even one of the barons. He literally cuts him open. Although, when Garrett says, ah, he's awful. If he hadn't done that, how would you have gotten the ring, though? It's just, just to be fair. But, yeah, it's... Yeah, ruthless... And just no regard for, you know, and, and he murders the guard, too. It's it's just, yeah, it's, yeah. Anyway, the these rows, you know, these long lines, whatever. All of these, you know, human bodies being carted carelessly, you know, with no regard, no respect, you know, for the individual. And then burnt to ashes. It reminds me of when the... the excellent visual in Metropolis, also very much about early industrialism, where the machine is eating people, you know, it's it's very effective to really show, yeah, you know, in, in Thief 2, you have lines like, they're, I, I miss trees, I miss gardens, you know, and in this, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a very striking visual, and just, yeah, it was, it was very, very nicely done with that. And you also see here, like in the trilogy, that if one faction has too much power, it really harms people. And, you know, that's true of the last third of the first Thief game and all of the second Thief game. And, yeah, in this, the, the moment that, you know, when the Baron has complete power, people are dying of the gloom. When Orion gets to, you know, have some more power, people die, the city gets burned, and ultimately he turns a lot of people into the creatures, and he refuses to accept that when you confront him. You know, he is certain he's doing the right thing. And, yeah, it's a... And... and also, the fact that the city's ancient history comes into play, very much like Thief 3. And, you know, the... Yeah, in with, with both... You know, I, I mentioned the, the factions using power. You know, it's... Yeah, it's, it's both sizes. The rich elite versus this cult of low-class, desperate individuals both use Eren for power. You know, the 
I mean, to, to be fair again to the grave and they think it's gonna heal them they with without that they really think that they are going to all die you know but still they are willing to use a human being to yeah you know I mean nobody looks at Aaron in that state and thinks I bet she has great benefits you know that this is clearly and you know, we know that the Baron, you know, when she was at the asylum over the course of some of that year, was also trying, you know, and he was trying to get more power, so it's more, yeah, but still, they, they're both abusing her, and that's, yeah. And, of course, we end in a not that different situation from where we started with Eren having gone, although now it seems that the power of the primal is safe you know, and, you know, you have the, the footstep thing, you know, footprints. So, you know, maybe there'll be a sequel. Like I said in the review, I would play a sequel probably, but I am not. If they bring back Aaron, I really hope they mature her significantly. I was like, you know, when, when near the end, when she comes back, you know, and she, you know, she ages and kills Orion and then you know Garrett tries to talk sense into her you know and she responds oh now you care I was like great we have Aaron back you who it's like wow really literally just saved you it's just yeah it it and I'm not saying that there aren't people out there who are like Aaron. I'm not even saying that there are that there aren't people out there who are like Aaron and who have every right to be, who have actually been abandoned. But I am saying it doesn't belong to Thief. Now, I like to keep the most divisive stuff for last, at least recently. I really wish this hadn't used a trans individual as a visual punchline. You know, when you save the the I don't remember exactly was it like y Yvette or Irsa or something, you know, for the the v Vittorio, I think, and you know, it turns out that, you know, she has a beard and we're supposed to laugh. Yeah, just Seriously, it it's not okay. It's disgusting to laugh at, you know, a group that has almost no power whatsoever. And, yeah, I really wish they hadn't done that. I will say that, on the whole, this wasn't too bad in that, you know, I mean, there's also the objectification of the you know the the prostitutes but yeah overall it really wasn't too much like you know there aren't a ton of like women dying just for motivation you know the one major female character I mean you could also say that you know uh, of course the major female character is really emotional and such but to be fair the the plot is literally that one female character may have died and Garrett is trying to figure out what happened and also just see if maybe she isn't dead, maybe he can save her, you know, so and and we actually get to know a lot about Erin. She's not just something for, you know, I, I like to say that if you can replace the, you know, if, if like the princess at the end of the castle, if you could essentially replace her with let's say, a, a fridge of beer, or a, a golden trophy, you know, if she, would, if she would add as much if she were that object, then, you know, yeah, then you're not giving us a compelling female character, and yeah, it might as well be that he's going out of his way to save a fridge full of beer, because it has as much meaning. You know, she is there as an object, something for you to rescue you know in this Aaron we find out a lot about her and it is you know there there is actual 
there, there is actual weight to her story. It's not just there so we pity her and we feel that Garrett really needs to, like, get her back or the like. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise. The links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.